now, if y'all go to grab at my loincloth, we fighting. And we wrestling and all kind of grown man stuff going to happen among us to get dudes off me. And if y'all force me, every man going to have one of every piece of my limbs. You wanted to be knocked out. Or I'm just not conscious. If I'm not making that decision on my own free will. You understand what I'm saying? Paul even told you in another letter, he said, when people see me, they was like, is this him who's so bold in speech? Yo, Paul told you in another letter, he said that men, when they saw him in person, was like, yo, is this him that speaks so bold in the letters? But in but when you see him in person, it's a weak looking dude. Paul wasn't making Timothy do nothing. He didn't make Timothy get circumcised. He circumcised Timothy because Timothy had to agree to be circumcised. Now Paul wasn't a killer. Paul just went with soldiers in the name of the Pharisees and the soldiers arrested people. He swung the pen. Paul was a pen swinger and a finger pointer. Paul ain't lift his hand up at nobody. Just got stoned. Paul held the coats. He was in agreement, but he held the coats. That's right. Paul here circumcised a, a, a Gentile who chose to be circumcised. Why? Because this Gentile was going with him into preaching, not just to other Gentiles, but to Jews. This one even in Jerusalem. They was pre he was going with Paul everywhere Paul went. And everywhere Paul went, it was going to be Jews there, right? Mm -hmm. Any synagogue you pop up at, it's a Jewish synagogue. So because of that, Paul and Timothy must have talked about it. And to be effective and for no question of his sincerity in the gospel to be questioned, it was an agreement for Timothy to be circumcised. And Timothy circumcised himself and Paul uh, uh, carried it out. He didn't make Timothy get circumcised because if he did, that would go against everything other people was trying to say Paul taught. Paul said, you can't, they don't have to be circumcised. Well, why did Paul circumcise a Greek? Timothy is a Greek, but he's Israel in his heart, no doubt. But he's a Greek. Timothy was circumcised in his heart and he was circumcised in his flesh, brothers and sisters. But according to his decision and agreement with his teacher, right? right. So T Paul didn't make Titus do it. Titus must didn't feel he had to do it. The brothers didn't force it on him, so on and so forth. We got two more. We got two more, and uh, we're going to end this. Go to Romans chapter 4, verse 8. So now we can read Romans 4 with the understanding of what we've learned over this past hour and a half. Okay? Romans 4, we're going to start at verse 8. Romans 4, and we're going to start at verse 8. When you got it, brother. Romans 4 and 8. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Uh -huh. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Mm -hmm. And he received the sign of circumcision, mm -hmm. a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Uh -huh. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet being uncircumcised. Now people want to say that the uncircumcised heart was the seal. Or the should seal. I say had being yet uncircumcised. Brothers and sisters, all this is saying is that the steps was was that Abraham, with the day when Abraham made step one, God considered him righteous because he believed God and left. Twenty-four years later, 
God gave him the covenant or the sign of circumcision, but you could say covenant there too, mm -hmm. which was nothing but a sign in the flesh that proved what he had in himself. So it's not that he's just a father of those who are circumcised in the flesh, but he even become the father of circumcision for those who, who, are, who are considered righteous in God's sight and they not circumcised yet. The same way for the past 24 years before circumcision of the flesh, he was already considered to be righteous in God's sight. Everything he went through, what he went through in Egypt, what he went through with Abimelech, what he went through and going to fight and get locked back, Sodom and Gomorrah, he was righteous all that time in the sight of God. Right. He was walking uncircumcised, I mean, excuse me, circumcised in his heart and uncircumcised in his flesh. So him believing and doing right things as God commanded him, God already considered him righteous. Then 24, in, in year 24 of his walk, he was circumcised. That's when God gave it to him. In the flesh. So, in the flesh. So, those of us who born under the covenant, we already under that. But for those who come into Christ and they're not circumcised in the flesh, they have to be they have to be circumcised in their heart out the gate. That's the first circumcision that should happen. Like it did for Abraham. And then down the line, I don't care if it's five years later, ten years later, a cat come to you like, yo, I want to be circumcised, man. You not forcing him to be circumcised, he will make that decision on his own. The same way God came to Abraham a quarter of a century later and, and caused him to be circumcised. If somebody been walking in Christ for 20 years and then decided to be circumcised, that is on them. But that don't mean we preach to them they shouldn't be circumcised. Right. We preach, yeah, you should be circumcised, but all in the time that the Father put it in your heart that that's the step you want to take. Once you are correct that, yo, that's what Abraham did, man. I want to do that. Right. That's what Paul and them is teaching. Because you don't teach Titus, you ain't got to be circumcised. But Timothy, man, you got to get circumcised. That is hypocrisy and that is contradictory. So we see Paul performing a circumcision on a Greek. And we see him in another sense, in another travel with a Greek. Now look, this is the thing. Timothy wasn't even in Jerusalem. But Titus was. And they didn't make Titus get circumcised. Why not? Acts 21. And this will be our last text. So I wanted to read about Abraham near. So now you can understand as you read Romans 4. Oh yeah, Abraham was cir circumcised in his heart first. And then he got circumcised in the flesh later. As a matter of fact, 24 years later. So when a man come into Christ, you don't tell him you got to be circumcised. No. If you are under the law, you will tell a Hebrew, yo. You should be circumcised because you are of the you are you are very well his bloodline. You born in his house, so if you want to circumcise, whoever didn't do that to you made a mistake, just like the mothers and fathers in the wilderness who didn't do it and died off. And Joshua had to circumcise them. You tell it, those who are of the blood, you should be circumcised. But even them, but if you don't have Christ, then that circumcision not gonna profit you. So you teaching people Christ. And as they learn Christ, everything else will fall into place. Go to Acts 21. And when we get to Acts 21, Brother Judah, this is our last scripture, y'all. We're going to read starting at verse 18. Acts 21, 18. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. So you got two things going on here, Brother Judah. You got Paul coming back, along with the brethren with him. Right. And they're testifying of the wonderful things that God have done among the nations where they don't went and preached the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. And so Elder James, the same James who wrote about faith without works, it works without faith, it's the same James. He's like, that's good, Brother Paul. Glory be to God. You see how many brethren of the house of Israel 
the blood, the flesh and blood descendants of Abraham. How many thousands? You see how many thousands of them there? 